Hi, I'm Amber Schroeder, the CEO of Paragon Corporation, and today I'm going to show you how to assemble our wireless stronghold tent. It's a nice portable option for Faraday uh, protection. It's also great to have in your lab. So, I'm going to start with the different components that are associated with the tent. First, we have, of course, the tent itself. Next, we have our poles. We have four long poles, and we have eight shorter poles. We have eight joints to be able to connect the different poles. We have our light, our stronghold gloves, and a new component, our stronghold pocket. We're going to go into why we have that a little bit later. So let's start out with the actual assembly. The way I like to build the tent, and I do use these in our lab here, is I like to put the joints on the ends of the pipe and then I like to assemble it that way. So one of the nice things that you have that give you a lot of flexibility associated with the assembly of the tent is you have a little gusset of stretch in each of the joint pockets. So all you have to do is very quickly slide it through. The long ones go on the long side of the unit, and the short on the short side. As you go through and do the assembly, you'll see how quickly you can put it together to have it available for use. Once I have one full side together, I like to flip the tent and then add the vertical joints or vertical poles. So we'll get those added. Many people wonder why you should process inside a Faraday tent, and this is giving you your maximum protection and best practice associated with processing your digital evidence. I like the tent as opposed to some of the other options out there because it's a little more flexible on where I can locate it. If I don't have a lot of room in my lab, I can always disassemble it when I'm not using it, which is an advantage because a lot of us don't have huge desks. And I also like it because I place my laptop and my device inside the Faraday tent at the same time. And the reason I like that is I don't have to ever provide any testimony or have any schematics or questions about how I'm shielding the different ports uh, associated with the device. Because if you use some of the other style of devices to shield, you have to have shielded ports. This one, it keeps it all encompassed inside the Faraday tent, so you don't have to worry about port shielding. You also don't have to worry about port leakage, which is a common problem as devices change. I'm almost done. I'm on my last joints. And then the final pole. Okay, so it's fully assembled. There is um, an actual top, bottom, back, etc. associated with the tent, so I'm going to show you what those are. The way you can identify the bottom of the tent is you'll see there's nothing else on it. It's completely blank. There's no pockets, there's no extra seamage, nothing. So that's going to be the bottom of our tent. We know we have the top because we have a mesh window in the middle of it. That's how we actually see what we're processing when we're actually doing the processing steps. And then we have the back of the tent. The back has a larger pocket which you can open up here. It slides all the way open so you can slide your laptop in the tent as well as your bag that maintains your evidence. And then we have our front. Our front has a large flap associated with it and then it has two holes for your arms. The flap is there so that if you want to use your wireless stronghold tent, to be able to store evidence, you can use battery packs, place your evidence inside there, close the front flap, and then you've created a more static cage instead of one you're working with. It's very budget friendly because you have multiple uses for it. Now we're going to go into how to actually use it. So now let's talk about how to actually use the tank. So first thing we want to do is we want to add our light inside it. This will also allow you to see that mesh window a little better. So I put the light in via the back. I will add that at the same time I would add my laptop. The light has three different settings on it typically. I pick the brightest setting associated with it. You can use any battery powered light that you would like. 
everyone always asks me, so why can't I put something through, like a power strip, different things like that. You have to remember any type of cabling that you have coming outside of the Faraday tent actually creates an antenna and it will violate your evidence as far as it will create a signal that will go in and get to your evidence. So once I have the light in, you can see the illumination. I'll actually hold it up to the mesh window for you here so you can see that it gets quite bright. Once you have your laptop and the phone in there, it's quite easy to see through that mesh window. We're gonna leave our light on and we're gonna look at the front of our tent. So this is when you get to add your Faraday gloves. Many people ask me questions like, do you wear these out at night? Because they have a little bit of an evening attire look to them. The reason they're designed like that is we wanted to have them form fitting to most people's hands. They do have elastic in them, they have a stretch to them. So what I do with these, and each lab is different. In our lab, we actually go through and different people have their own sets of gloves, but you can add latex gloves or rubber gloves underneath them to keep them a little cleaner. If they ever get dirty, you can hand wash these with a very mild detergent and then um, you have to hand dry them, meaning let them out, do not put them in the dryer. So I'm going to place them on both my arms and you'll see one of the nice things that you have is that they go up pretty far in your arms. If I wasn't wearing long sleeves, you'd see they go all the way up to my elbows. So once I have both of these on, a huge advantage that you have with them is that do, they do interact with the touch environment. So I have a text message here on my phone. I'm going to clear that message with a simple swipe. So I can still actually interact with the device that I'm going to be working with, which is an advantage to you. So once I have my device or my gloves on, I am the final seal of the Faraday process. So once I place them in the holes, and I'll turn here so you can see them, that seal is that final step in the process. And that's when I would open up my Faraday bag or my stronghold bag inside my tent and remove my evidence. Not until I actually have the gloves on and I'm interacting in the tent itself. Okay. So now the next question, what is this Faraday pocket for? So the Faraday pocket is designed for the newer iOS devices. They change the way the antenna works on those devices and so you have to add extra protection to them. They actually have dual antennas on them. They work fine associated with the wireless stronghold bags, so they're still well protected in there, but your problem is when you start working in a larger environment you're trying to protect. So we like to have this as a double assurance. So what you do is you place your iPhone 8, iPhone 10, etc inside this bag. I'm going to just place my phone in there, which is a Samsung. And then you'll see that you can still see the device in the bag, which is nice because you can interact with it. We actually include a stylus for you so you can interact with the physical device itself, but it is protected. You note though, because we did a gusset on the bottom with a drawstring, that allows you to feed the cable through the pocket and connect it to your laptop inside the Faraday tent. It's the best way for you to protect those particular types of devices as they are new and they have an enhanced antenna. It would be very tragic for you to, of course, have any signal leakage occur because you weren't prepared for those newer devices. We always try to stay up on the trends associated with how the signals on these devices are working to ensure that you're getting the best protection possible. So the final step I'd like to show you is actually how the signal protection works. So I have one of my staff members' phones. you can see has a full signal. I'm going to place it inside the Faraday tent and note that I use the back of the tent itself. One of the things you always want to check is to make sure that all of these seams are lined up. We have a unique feature on some of our Faraday products where we have a sealed hook and loop that actually has a metal in the hook and loop. So that way you get that extra protection on each one of the seals because you have metal associated with it there. Okay, and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to call that device.
This is the one part that's hard, is getting all of the testing in. So we're calling that device, making sure I have the right phone number. Okay. So I'm now calling that device. I don't know if you can hear it vibrating inside the tent. I figured that was the best way for you to know that it was giving a ring. And now I have my arms in the tent. I'll flip it around so you can see that. And I have the phone here. And as you can tell, no ring coming through to the device. and no missed call either, which means you've got a functioning Faraday cage and your evidence is protected. So it's exactly what you need when you're processing mobile devices or other wireless evidence. Once you're done, you have about a 30 second delay so that I can pull my arms out of the holes. My device is still protected inside there. I can close the outer flap and then I can determine in, uh, what my next step is in my archive process if I power the device down and that's how I end up storing them or if I use a battery unit and I store them that way. So you have a lot of different options at that point. So just in case you didn't get to see the vibrating or hear the vibrating actually associated with blocking the tent, I thought I'd give you one other example. I'm going to have this device call the other one and then I'm going to place it inside the tent and you're going to see that the signal stops when the ringtone stops. So that device is now calling this one here. And it's blocked. So it's that easy. It's kind of hard to show you the demo because you can't be inside the tent, but um, the device is actually blocked and you're good to go. Thank you for joining me for the assembly video on how to use the Parabens Wireless Stronghold Tent. You can find details about our tent on www.paraben.com or you can email us at forensics at paraben.com. Please join us next time for another training video on our YouTube channel at Paraben Forensics. Thank you.